As quilters, we love making quilts for the holiday. They add such warmth and charm to any room. And now we're going to add an extra festive touch with this beautiful mega hot pad. Check out those gorgeous fall colors and a maple leaf in the middle of that on-point log cabin. You're going to want to know how to make this. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise. And if you would love to take this with you to your next gathering and let everybody enjoy this beautiful quilt. I'm going to show you how to do it and how to do it quickly. So let's get started. We have a quilt to make. This is what I want to show you today. Oh my goodness. We have our mug rugs, but these are the actually kind of jumbo size. I kept adding rows and rows and I couldn't stop, but I just love how these turn out. And there's a little applique leaf in the middle of each one. And I stash pieced them, you know, how I did my Christmas trees a couple weeks ago, and just take lots of different fabrics and piece them together. And, you know, if you look up close, you can see there's three different fabrics there, and there's a couple here. And it just makes for, you know, a lot of fun. And I enjoy the look of it. So we've got this, and they're all with the thermal batting. So these are, are heat resistant and can be used as hot pads. And then the back just has a uh, plain fabric. So that's that's what these are. But this is what I'm excited about. This is our mega hot pad. And check out that maple leaf in the middle. Oh my goodness, that was fun. So I pieced all the fabrics together with all the colors that I wanted. And then I cut my leaf out. And I just think it's beautiful. Of course, these fabrics are gorgeous. This just makes a really great set. So I'm excited to share this with you. I want to show you how it goes together. Um, particularly doing a log cabin on point like this. This is a wonderful, wonderful uh centerpiece it's just it's beautiful and of course I like anything on point anyways and I, I think it just really looks terrific so go ahead and sit back I've got a lot to show you and we're going to do some quilting today's a fabric sorting day we sort of went right into Christmas this year and I didn't do any fall and I'll show you why in a minute but what I want to do now is make up for lost time so I'm getting all my fall fabrics and I'm I'm looking at greens and browns, orange, yellows, everything in between, get some golds in there and you know some of these burgundies. I'm I'm a New England girl so I like the red maple leaves and we've got some orange in here. So these are scrap strips that I have. You know when I cut my fat quarters I always have a strip at the top after I cut three rows of five inches, I do a 10 inch and then a five inch and then whatever's left, I save the strips. And so I always have lots of strips to work with. Oh, and here's a piece. Do you remember the uh, a brown quilt that I made last year at this time? This was the backing on it. I made the backing out of fat quarters. I'll have to put that link up above. Oh, that turned out so pretty. My cousin loves it, by the way. So we have this. What I'm doing, though, is sorting out my colors. What I found is there are a lot of these, let me pull this group out, um, fabrics that had blues in them. And I don't want to use blues in this bundle. I'm really going for the fall with the golds and, and oranges and browns. And I'll save these for something else. But look, at this is how I come up with colors for a quilt. I'll start sorting through fabric and I'll put things aside. And these are fat quarters that I received that I haven't used yet. So now that I'm compiling them as a group, and look at here's some of the pretty colors that'll go well with it. Um, you know, I've got a plan. Plus, look at these. Oh my goodness, this is sort of like denim blue. And what a great quilt that would be. I'm not sure about the color. Blue and white would be awesome. It always looks great. But I want to do something different. I'm not, you know, oh, this would be a good 4th of July blue, wouldn't it? Hmm. Okay, so we have some options here. I'm setting those aside. And the other thing is you'll see I have some fabrics. These are layer cakes. These are some dark uh, fat quarters. This is the one I made the quilt last fall. These are the pieces I have left over from that. 
and some gold. And then here are some other fat quarters that I've been hanging on to to do just this. So as I get my fat quarter collections every month, then this is what I do is I pull out what I'm going to use now. I'll set the rest aside, group them sort of by color so I know what I have and when I'm ready to use them. Now, that brings me to this. Please don't judge, <laughs> but I've been saving my fat quarter uh, fabrics. And the reason, this is my September, October, November fabrics. And I know they're fall. And I knew I was going to go into Christmas right away. So I set these aside. So when I pulled my fall fabric out, I can open these too. And I want to share that with you. So we'll just take a few minutes to look at these. And these are my uh, batik fat quarters that I get every month. And from the fat quarter shop. Okay, now this is pretty. This is um, makes me think of woodland browns, but this would be great for some leaves. I like these uh, these browns in here would work really nice and gold. I don't want to go with whites. I want to keep it with the browns and oranges so I could pull out some of those, but those are some great colors. And then this one, let's see. Ooh, I like these. Autumn Trail. Check those out. This is everything I absolutely need. Look at those beautiful colors. I really like that. So I can go with the greens and the golds, but I want to include the browns. But you know what the browns I like? I like these browns with the burgundies in them. Look, at, isn't that gorgeous? But these are all going to go really well together because some of these have the green. There's a little blue in there in one of these, but I'm okay with a little bit. I just don't want a lot. Oh my goodness, this is coming together really pretty. And let's see what this one is. I fear I need to open my fall fabric before my Christmas bundle gets here in a few weeks. Ooh, look, 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 fun. I love it. And blues really go well with browns and oranges. A lot of times when you get fat quarter collections, you wonder, hmm, why is the blue there? If you look on the color wheel, blue is perfect for these, uh, these collections. There are some great colors here I'm really excited about using and combining together. And what I'm going to do is some more raw edge applique. And I'm going to make some hot pads. Well, I'm going to make mug rug hot pads, and I think I may make the super size. No, we did a super size. We're going to do the mega hot pad. All right, here we go. So what I want to do, though, is cut some pieces from a stash fabric, un not unlike this, but I'm going to do it in these colors. Oh, how beautiful will that be? And cut leaves and, you know, different foliage and things like that. Oh, we've got a plan coming together here. So what I need to do is pull my strips together and I'll cut some fat quarters. I'll pull the ones that are cut already that I have pieces of that I can, I can pull together. And then I will see what's left and what more I need. I may be heavy on one color or another and pull that in. And I'll start piecing my stash fabric. Then, oh my gosh, it's going to be ready to be kind of cutting and pasting, but in quilting. We call it raw edge applique, and I'm really excited about it. So this is going to be wonderful. Okay, let me go ahead and pull some of this together and see where I'm at, what colors I'm using. And um, <laughs> it's a little overwhelming. There's a lot here. If you have some ideas for some great fall quilts, let me know. I certainly have have some wonderful fabrics I can work with. I'm excited about that. Okay, I'll be back in a few with some good plans that we can uh, play around with. I decided on a few colors. I wanted to use more, but I'm going to do basically a log cabin. So there are going to be rows involved. And I can only use so many fabrics because these pieces aren't going to be that huge. But you'll notice blue made it in. When I had all these colors together, I really liked them, but nothing really stood out. The yellow I thought would pop more, and, and it does, the yellow and the gold but it's just not enough contrast and like the oranges and some of the greens and some of these sort of burgundy pinky colors all had bits of blue in it. So I did it. I put the blue in and let me show you how wonderful this looks. 
Doesn't that look terrific? This is the mug rug. I'm doing this in two sizes, um, primarily because I wanted to see how it was going to work, and I love it. So here are a few. Actually, these are three. I started with a three-inch square, and I used, uh, let's see, one-and-a-half-inch strips. So these are one-inch finished, and I really like the look of them. And you can see I, I squeaked in that little blue corner because <laughs> I really like how it looked. And I love that some of these uh, greens have leaves in them. And that's why I like this sort of rosy burgundy green fabric because it has a lot of leaves. So that kind of goes with my theme. And to finish off that theme, I am going to create my stash fabric, you know, like we did for the Christmas trees, but I'm going to do it for leaves. And let me show you. I have a couple pieces already started. I just think those are so pretty. And I'm not going to need a lot because this is obviously a small space. That's three inch. But the hot pad, the mega hot pad, I might add, is going to have a five inch square in the middle. And I'll show you that in a minute. So I started just by putting colors together. I take a strip and add small pieces. I took what was left from this. So by starting my log cabin piece first, I had a lot of small ends to work with. And that's how I decided what to use. That way there's not a lot of big decisions. I just grab what I have and put it together. And then these two I just put together like this and I'll cross cut it and I'm, I'm going to put all that together. So I'll show you at the machine um, some of these, how they finish. But what I do want to also show you here is I did my log cabin in the traditional square like this. And I knew what size I wanted to finish, but I wanted it to finish this way. And my goal was to go with eight by 10 but I jumped up a bit to nine by 11 in order to get those blue corners. So these are going to be big mug rugs and small hot pads together. They're going to be reversible. So we're going to call this a luncheon mug rug. And it's got a little more than just, you know, tea and cookies, tea and biscuits. Um, we're going for the full sandwich and we've got room for it all. But what I wanted to do is start it off in a square. Alternatively, you can start it off um, on point, but you kind of need a base fabric. And I had cut some um, rectangles, the size that I want my uh, mug rugs to be, but I didn't want to have this extra fabric underneath and all that. So here's what I decided to do. So I started out, like I said, with eight by 10 but we ended up with nine by 11. So if I put this in that, you know, uh, what do I want to say, within those numbers, within the grid at that measurement, you can see how these are fitting in the middle. And so these points are what I'm going to line up. So I take this and I needed to get three rows to get my eight or nine inches. And again, it's totally up to you what size you want to make. There's no right or wrong whatsoever. And it's whatever you like. You can take them smaller. You can put, you know, a little one inch block in the middle, one and a half, anything that, that works well for you. The key here is to get your points on lines. So you want to line up your grid. Let's see, that goes that way. There we go. Okay, so we have our four points mostly on the grid. Now, we are not perfect sewers, and therefore when seam allowances are off a little bit, our square is not going to be exactly perfect. But you know what? We're cutting off those end points, and it's not going to matter, so that's okay. And with my side points on the grid line and my vertical points on the grid line, I'm ready to go ahead and cut. But like I said, I need to go work from the middle out. So I need, let's see, this is going to be up and down. So that's going to be my nine inch measure. So I need one, two, three, four and a half. So I need four and a half above and four and a half below. Now that's going to put my square in the middle. 
If you want your square to be up or down or in a corner, then it's just a matter of how you cut this because as you add the rows, that's going to continue growing your square. And if you put it up in a corner, you just keep adding on to that area that you want to be extended. Okay, I can't talk here because I'm going to put this on the line. <laughs> And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. And the reassurance is when you cut this, that they both are the same. And that what we leave behind is the same. So we cut down to our previous row. Okay. Now, on the back here, or on the back, on the sides, we're not quite there yet. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, I guess we are there, aren't we? I didn't think we'd come that far. Okay, so I want 11, and I need it to be at 5.5. So I'm going to put my points right on that grid line. And we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a half. And I'm just going to cut the tip of that one off, okay? So I go to five, and then I measure out half an inch and trim that off. I did it, yep. And then over this way, so I have, this one is, um, if I put it on a straight, on a, uh, on a one inch mark, I'm less apt to make a mistake. So I move it over. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And right there, so again, we want to compare that the triangles we cut are kind of the same size. They may be off a little, and that's okay, but this is a good uh, affirmation to you that you are on the right track. Now, once you do this part, let me just get this out of the way. Think of the half square triangles I'm going to be able to make with those. How pretty. Here we have this so you can see this right here is that spot so now i have three more rows actually like two and a half that one hardly counts and i'm going to show you how it looks when i add these rows because i don't need to add full rows i just need to add rows here so you can see this first row is only that big and it's the same all the way around and they get smaller as we go out so that's how this works. Now, I want to show you how far I am on the big one. Once I got here, I started my big mega hot pad. Hold on just a moment, I'll show you. And here's my big one. This is going to be for the supersize jumbo <laughs> large mega hot pad. And it is, it's going to be 18 by 24. But my idea behind that, because we sometimes we'll have a group around our table and our table is not huge. My sewing table is a eight foot long dining room table that's ancient, but we don't have room for that in the dining room. So our table is smaller. And I find if we have a large area in the center where I can put everything, that just sort of makes it easier. So for me, I like the idea of having a large place in the middle where I can set multiple casseroles together. Then if I still need more around the edges, I'm going to have my little uh, mug rug hot pads that I can can add as well where needed. So there really is a, a plan behind this and I just I just think it's a lot of fun and it's pretty and it's festive. And I like the colors, they're looking gorgeous. So I'm very excited about all this. Now, what I do want to show you is how we're going to trim this one. So 18 by 24, and we would say that's pretty darn ginormous. <laughs> so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're going to nine inches on each side, top and bottom, in order to get our 18. So let me just one more time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we've got everything lined up nice and straight. So we're just losing a little bit off of these points. I'm going to turn this around. And then I'll cut this side here, get these lined up. Let's see, there and there. Make sure I get them on the right line. 
So one, two, and one, two. Yeah, you don't want to have it like this and cut it because, well, then you're going to have a wonky log cabin, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you can embrace that and have a lot of fun with it. So here we are. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. And our triangles we're cutting off are about the same size, so we're good there. Now, 24, that means 12 in each direction, and I have 5, 10. So I have another couple inches. So the next row is going to be a complete row, whereas on this one, the row after the blue got cut off. So um, don't be concerned that, you know, you may cut them in a different manner be, just because their size, the size ratio isn't the same. Now, something else to think about. There's a lot you can do with this to change this up. Now, obviously, like I said, you can change your centers. This is sewn with two inch strips. And you notice I tried to switch them up as I went around my square. But you can add some of the one and a half inch. So I have some one and a half inch from the other one um, that I have left over. And I may go ahead and put these in on this outer piece. And then, you know, put some big and small. It, it just adds some interest to add a little bit uh, different sizes in there, not just the colors, but the sizes will really add to the design. And it just makes it more attractive and keeps your eye looking, keeps your eye uh, involved, engaged, and watching to see what's what's going on here. And every time you go to pick something up, you see a new color or a new design and think, oh, isn't that pretty? So it's a fun piece. And I hope you all get a chance to try this. So let me go ahead and get this to a bigger point where we're ready to cut the sides. That's when we'll come back. So we have one or two more rows to get to our outer edge on the side. And then from there, we are going to trim off and then finish our corners. All right, there we are. Not so bad, it's going pretty easily. So I pressed my pieces that I'm going to be using to create my applique fabric for the leaves, or yeah, for the leaves, and I'm going to trim them because I want them to be square. And I'm not going for a wonky look here. I want these to all come together uh, in a nice square piece. But then when I cut them out, as I did with the Christmas trees, I cut them on an angle. And I really like the look of that because then it doesn't look so pieced. It's not all stacked on top of each other. And I really uh, like that. Okay, I want to make sure this piece is square. It looks a little... No, it's good. What it is is this end. So you don't have to go to this length, but at the beginning, when I'm first putting pieces together, I want to make sure that I'm relatively square. That, And when I say square, I mean I have square corners, because otherwise trying to put things together uh, can be a challenge. And that's just the way I work, and you do it the way that works for you, and that's absolutely fine. This is very free form. There are no rules. It's just something that I enjoy doing and it's a great way to use fabric. It's also wonderful and creative. It's it's fun to do. I enjoy it. So let me go ahead and trim that one off. And what else? And this one. So I'm just going to go through and trim all these up and then we'll start piecing these together. And once we do that, we're going to have our leaves. Now, one thing I do want to mention about how I'm piecing these, I'm trying to go from dark to light. And my idea is I'm going to have a piece of fabric that will start in sort of a dark greenish color, kind of go into some dark oranges, and then go into some yellow, and, and sort of have the colors transition since it's not completely monochromatic, there's lots of shades of these different colors, I want it to uh, look like you would at a leaf. You look at a leaf and there are a lot of colors in there and they transition from light to dark from one point to the other. And that's kind of where I'm going. 
Uh, and, and not that that's what it'll be, but with that goal in mind, then I have a plan of how I'm, I'm going to, to do this. So let me go ahead. So I have some big ones here and it's nice to have big ones because when you get to the outer edges, you need some longer pieces that you can, you know, fit in with others. And I have the narrow, I have the wide. And so just, you know, keep everything mixed up and put them together and, you know, just, Make it interesting and have fun with it. I just had to show you a close-up of how wonderful all these fabrics look. I'm really excited. Now, I did do a narrow yellow gold around here. So I followed out to the blue like I did on the small ones. And then I put this little yellow band. I thought it would kind of brighten it up, and it looks great next to the blue. And then I put the rosy golds to the outside of that. But now it's time to trim these outside corners because I've gotten myself out to about, I think, 26 inches. And I want to take it down to 24. So I'll trim these off just like I did the top and bottom. So let me show you how to do that. I have everything lined up and centered on my mat. So the top and the bottom, they're cut 18 inches apart. So it's going to be an 18 inch wide by 24 long. And what I did is I centered these and made sure that I have my middle at a point where I can measure from, from here out. Now, fortunately for me, my points line up right on the line. So I know as long as both of these line up the same way, I'm good. And my outer points are on the line, number nine. So these are nine inches and that's the center point. Now, it measures 26, I think, let's see, we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, oh, 26, 27. So, hmm, let's see, I just want to make sure I'm counting right, 5, yep, and an inch on each side. So, I am going to cut an inch and a half off of each end, and then that's going to give me my 24 inches. But, I want to leave some seam allowance. And I wasn't so much worried about this part because, you know, once I'm not adding layers to that like I am here. So at this point, when I say layers, I mean more strips. And so what I'm going to do is just cut an inch off and that puts me right at 25 inches. And that's kind of a good place to go. And then when I get out to the end, I can cut it where I want it with, you know, seam allowance and such. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut an inch off each side. And then what I'm going to do is just finish filling out the, uh, the corners here. Let me get over on this side. So now I know how far to come. I'm not going to have any more overlapping corners at this point. They're all just going to go from here and here. So I can just measure that distance and determine what size strip. So at this point, I go from this, whoops, let's go. We go from this edge to this edge. It's about 11 and a half. So I probably cut a 12 inch. So I need four 12 inch pieces to go around and finish this circle. So I just need to pick out which fabric I'm going to go with and, uh, We'll get it figured out. I'm really excited about this. This is coming out so pretty. I love these colors. All right, we'll take another break. I'll do some sewing and be right back. I want to show you something else that I realize I'm doing as I'm sewing strips. And I do not pre-cut them. I start with a full length strip and beginning with the non-selvage edge, I just lay it on and I sew it. But when I get down to this end, instead of cutting it straight, I cut it at an angle. So I have it sewn, and then I fold it out, and I cut it, you know, a quarter to a half inch away from that angle. Now, the reason I do that is because when I go to the next corner, I just turn that fabric so the angle goes in the direction I want. I leave at least a half inch overhang so I can trim 
and then I just start sewing. And then I do the same thing here. If I had scissors, I would just cut it right there. But I find that works out really well because otherwise, if you have all these straight edges, you're cutting off these little tiny triangles and throwing it away. This way you're using it to your advantage and you're going to have less waste. And that's that's always an important thing for me. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this up. I think I'm finally getting to the point where I'm going to be uh, at the end. This is just keep going and going and going. But it's been fun and I love that I can combine all these colors together. Now, these small pieces like this, I'm going to throw away. They're just not anything I'm going to use. And then I just put this in my scrap pile. Actually, I'm using all these pieces that are left over to create the fabric for my leaves. So I'm excited about that. And let's see, I'm just going to do another trim over here. And then we're going to be good to go. So it's coming along. We're getting close. And I hope you're enjoying this and getting some wonderful ideas. You know what I thought when I was looking at this as it's getting bigger? How gorgeous would this be as the medallion for the center of a quilt? Here, let me show you the big one. Just look how pretty this is with all the colors. Oh my goodness. And then you can come up with, I don't know, I think of flying geese around the edges or something like that. It'd be gorgeous. Hmm, that might be an idea I'll have to try. I really like doing this. It's so pretty, and I love the fact that it's on point. I love any kind of quilt on point. It just changes the dynamic so much, and it, it looks far more, what's the word, complicated or complex, but it really isn't. We're making a square, and then we just turn it a little bit. How easy is that? Well, this is my last strip, and I just want to show you I have beautiful corners on three corners. The fourth one I missed just, I don't know, like the seam allowance worth, and that's probably what this is. Somewhere in here, my seam allowance was probably off a bit. So I have this little piece right here, and I am going to tuck this in just like that and sew that piece in. And, and look just how well that matches. Oh my goodness, that'll never be noticed. And being in the corner, the binding will be around it. So I'm going to fix the faux pas, and then we're going to move on. And the next step is to put our layers together. So we need a layer of cotton batting and a layer of Insulbrite, which is our heat-resistant thermal batting and then another layer of our batting, and then the backing. Everything needs to be cotton. Obviously, the, the uh, Instabrite is not all cotton. It has uh, a metallic thread, basically, a metallic layer through the center of it. That layer of Instabrite will keep the heat above the metallic layer so it doesn't go through and damage the table, which is the whole idea behind this. But everything else has to be cotton, including your batting, because anything polyester, you know, the poly battings and things like that, they are going to melt under high heat. And when the heat hits that thermal batting, it's going to kind of radiate and stay there. So that batting is going to get really, really warm on the top side. But that's okay. Cotton can handle it. The cotton will be fine. The other advantage of the cotton is that it's absorbing any condensation so that you don't pick it up and have a puddle of water underneath. You know how that happens when you get something hot and cold and condensation occurs and, you know, that science stuff we teach the kids. Well, it matters in quilting, too. So let me go ahead and pull all that together. I haven't even decided what I'm putting on the back yet. I can't use a fat quarter, 18 by 24. It'll be too small. So I need to come up with something else. I'll get some ideas together, though. I put a number of small pieces together, mixing the colors and sort of grouping them. And now I'm going to put these small ones into larger groups. And then this is going to... Uh, be what I use to make my leaves. So let's see. Let's kind of fold that up there. And I just, you know, kind of put colors together. 
and pieces together that I think will work. And you just kind of never know what you're going to end up with. Okay, so I'm going to add this piece here because this or, or this uh, gold one wasn't really long enough. I wanted it over on this side. And so I'm going to put it this direction. And I'm doing everything in green thread because that's sort of the dominant color I was working with for a lot of this. And so I'll press this open and there's one there I can probably get a leaf out of. And then here, let's see, I want it to kind of go right about here, but I need to make sure this goes straight. You can see this sort of bows out, so I'm going to sew this, and I know this one is straight because I don't have a lot of other pieces already in there. And let me go ahead and sew this. And just make sure that we are. Okay, so that should do it for a couple small leaves. I only need one large one, but I have a couple pieces of fabric kind of pulled together that might work. And I think, let's see, I'm trying to decide how I like this best. I like it, if I do it this way, my seams are too lined up. And so if I kind of do it this way with those in between, I think that'll work. So let me go ahead and put these pieces together. And, oh, that's the one that's finished. I was going to say, what does that go to? <laughs> you do have to be careful because... You get so many little pieces floating around, you're not quite sure what's what. And let's see, I have one other pair that I thought I could work together. I kind of like the idea of those greens, uh, green vines kind of matching up. And I want this more up this way. There we go. This is the one I like. So once I get these pieces put together, I will press them really well. And I will draw my pattern on the steam seam. And if I need to make it bigger, I can always add another piece. So I'm just going to sew to the end and just sort of cut the thread in case I need to come in and add another piece. I certainly can. Okay, so what do we have here? Whoops. So these I'm thinking will be some small leaves. This one will be a larger one. It's, it's larger than what the leaf will be, but I want to be able to kind of place it with, with color in order to get um, some different colors throughout the leaf. And then here I have this one. So let me go ahead and draw my pattern and get the steam a seam and I'll show you how that's going to work. I've drawn a pattern on the steam a seam. I just cut a, a square out and of course it has the loose paper that protects the uh, adhesive on the back and as soon as I am ready to work with this I'll take that off and I can attach this to the fabric. And I really like this piece best. What I like about this is that I get those reds in there, but I'm also getting the golds right here and the greens at the bottom. So I like the way these colors are kind of tight where this is spread out more. This will be great to cut out some of my small leaves from. I can do that. I can probably get three or four out of that. So that should be fine. So what I'm going to do is put that on the back of my fabric. So I'll turn this over. And I'm going to take this backing piece off and I'm going to place it where I want on the fabric. And I need to make sure 
that I'm not going over the edges. And let's see, do I like it that way or do I like it this way? Kind of get some ideas of how I can do this. I think that's going to work. So what I'll do is I just press this and you can see it, it holds. It's not going to come apart. And it'll hold well enough for me to cut this out. And then what I'll do is peel this back piece off. Let me show you. There's adhesive under here. And it actually pulls away. Let me just, I usually can pull it off with my thumbnail. Once you uh, cut your piece out, then you will cut this pattern out and then pull the paper off. And this is what's left. This is what adheres to your fabric. And that's what's going to be the glue. It's like a honeycomb. And when you put the heat and steam to it, it just sort of melts. And it doesn't go through the fabric, but it's wonderful in the way that it adheres it and holds it in place in, in a very permanent fashion. And then I'm going to go through and sew around this. I know, wouldn't you think I could find an easier leaf than a maple? You know, the maple leaf is very traditional fall for me, and and I love the, the bright colors of the leaves. In Colorado, we had aspen leaves, and they're very easy. It's sort of a, a wide teardrop, and they're yellow, <laughs> so <laughs> it would have been a lot easier to do that, but this, this is just sort of what I had my mind set on. So I'll go ahead, and I'll cut this out, and I'm going to Put it on the hot pad right in the middle, and I can't wait to see how this looks. All right, we are moving right along here. Well, everything looked great as I'm cutting out until I get to this point, and look, it's, it's beyond the fabric. So what I'm going to do is I have this piece of gold fabric that'll work great right there. I am just going to place this on here, and I'm going to sew this so that I can go ahead and then cut my piece out and I'm going to have enough fabric. So that's something else that you can do along the way is, I mean, you just make it work. You never know what you're going to be up against. But I just wanted to show this to you because this is something that, you know, often has to be done. All right, I'll keep moving forward. I have my applique in place. I use the steam seam too, so it's applied and it's steamed down so it's not going anywhere. And now I'm going to quilt. And as I'm quilting, I'll also do a uh, the raw edge applique. I'm just going to use a straight stitch and go around the uh, edge of the leaf. And I'll show you that here in a minute. I'm just gonna start doing my quilting i'm just doing an easy wavy line diagonally across not quite corner to corner but almost but then as i get right about here i'm going to pull in onto the leaf and then i can stitch around the leaf i didn't trust myself doing the zigzag on the curve like this and with these narrow points I just thought the straight stitch would be a better, safer bet. So we'll just go around like this. And I'll come down and then I'll just continue on my way. So that's how easy that is. So I'm just going to uh, continue quilting. And this won't take but a few minutes. It's, it's pretty quick doing it this way. And then I'll get the binding on and we're going to be finished. All right, they're finished. This is wonderful. I'm so excited. I have my four mini hot pads and each one has a little applique leaf on there. And... I think they're wonderful, and they're also going to make a great mug rug. Everything, like I said, has the the thermal batting, so that makes this perfect. Oh, and look at the back. I used a different color fabric for each one. I know, this is probably my favorite. I love the ferns, but it's just really pretty 
wonderful fall colors and then this guy turned out great look at that maple leaf oh my goodness that was quite the the challenge but I like it I think it's pretty and I like the fact that we have the different colors and piecing all that together worked out well and I used a single piece of fabric on the back and I love how that turned out all the bindings are a little bit different I think there's a total of three different bindings here that I use and that just they're all sort of in the gold family which works out really well and there you have it here's some fun projects for you to give a try and uh, think about what you're going to be doing for your thanksgiving dinner or or celebrations that you may have coming up that you want to have some decorations for and here's a fun way to do it or this is a wonderful gift if you're going to someone's house for thanksgiving and bringing a dish make sure you put a great little hot pad underneath there how wonderful would that be well i hope you enjoyed this it's been great sharing this with you i had a lot of fun making these and i so enjoyed these fabrics i appreciate you being here and i look forward to seeing you again soon as always it's a pleasure have a fantastic rest of your day